In the end of the previous video, I advertised uh, to some degree the main result that we're going to derive, namely that the electrons near the Fermi surface at low temperatures are going to form these uh, bound states um, uh, of two electrons, which uh, are going to condense and form the superconductor. And now we're entering the technical part uh, of the lecture where we actually would want to uh, get this uh, calculation done and to see how it actually happens. Um, and it connects somewhat to uh, the calculations we were doing in the previous lecture uh, where we were studying uh, particles in uh, various potentials. So there we were dealing with a single particle quantum mechanics. So it was an externally imposed potential in which a single particle was moving or which was localized there. Now what we want to do, we want to study actually two particle problem uh, with two particles here uh, describing effectively the two electrons near the Fermi surface uh, for the context of super in the context of superconductivity. And um, it turns out that actually two particle problems uh, oftentimes in quantum mechanics reduce to single particle problems. And uh, in this segment, I'm going to illustrate uh, how exactly it happens. So here we're interested in analyzing this two particle Schrodinger equation uh, and um, uh, to make things uh, general for the sake of uh, lectures later in the course, I'm considering here actually two uh, different particles with masses M1 and M2, but in the next segment we'll uh, work with the two electron problem where M1 is actually equal to M2. So, um, uh, so what we have here is uh, essentially kinetic energy of two particles. So this corresponds to uh, the P1 squared over 2M1, kinetic energy of the first particle, plus P2 squared over 2M2, kinetic energy of the second particle, and the interaction between them, which we uh, expect to depend only on the distance between the particles. And now we have a wave function that uh, depends on both coordinates of uh, the particle R1 and R2 and well the right hand side is the uh, usual energy times psi. So we want to solve this uh, equation. Now uh, the goal of this uh, video is to show that actually uh, instead of solving this complicated looking uh, differential equation which depends on two vectors R1 and R2 actually can reduce it to the uh, good old uh, single particle Schrodinger equation that we already know how to solve. And to see how it happens, uh, let's uh, do the following change of variables. To go, uh, we will go from the uh, coordinates R1 and R2, the actual coordinates of each individual particles, to uh, this capital R and uh, um, uh, lowercase r. So the uh, former uh, represents the center of mass of our particles. So it's uh, defined as so. And the second one is the distance between the particles. So the relative distance between particles R1 and R2. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, rewrite this equation in terms of this capital R and letter case R. So in order to do this, uh, we, uh, well, first we notice that the, uh, of course, the um, potential energy depends only on the distance, basically by construction. We've chosen it this way. And the only non-trivial part which we have to analyze is this uh, kinetic energy, uh, the derivative, this, these Laplacians which appear uh, in these uh, brackets. And so we're going to work with these guys now. So to calculate this um, part of the kinetic energy, we can focus for the sake of simplicity on just one component of this Laplacian. So Laplacian is uh, sum of uh, second derivatives with respect, of, uh, with respect to each of the directions in our problem x, y, and z. So let's just focus on x. And in this case, the capital um, case x is going to be the center of mass uh, x component, and this is going to be uh, a relative coordinate in the x direction. Now, uh, in order to uh, change the variables in the Laplacian, the derivatives, we can go from the derivative with respect to x1 to a derivative with respect to the capital X and lowercase x. And uh, this transformation can be done by rewriting it as so. So we basically add in some sense derivative in the uh, numerator and denominator. And uh, so this uh, derivative d capital X over x1 cal is calculated from here. And this derivative d lowercase x over x1 is calculated from here. And uh, the first one is, uh, as you can see, uh, gives us m1 over the uh, total mass, and the second one is give us uh, basically minus uh, sine. So this is the result 
uh, of this derivative uh, when expressed through capital X and uh, small x. We can do the same thing, of course, for x2, and this is the result, with the only difference here being m2 and here being the plus sign. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it. So we can actually calculate the quantity that we're after, written here, um, by uh, essentially squaring uh, this uh, result. So this would give us uh, the uh, x part of the Laplacian for the first particle, and this, will, uh, th this guy squared will give us the uh, x component of the Laplacian for the second particle. So uh, therefore, this guy goes here, and um, you know, this result goes here. And uh, as you can see, if we square this uh, operation, you know, these derivatives, we're going to get the second derivative with respect to the center of mass, the second derivative with respect to the center of coordinate, uh, to, to the relative coordinate, uh, but also we're going to get the cross terms. And actually the coordinates were uh, chosen in such a way that um, the cross terms in these two brackets cancel each other out because of the minus sign here and the plus sign here. So, um, well, you can verify this, of course, just uh, by writing it down or just by staring it for, uh, at it for a minute or so. But uh, it, it's going to be pretty clear. So if you put everything together from these two brackets after a straightforward calculation, this is what we're going to get. So this is essentially a result for, this, uh, for the x component of this quantity we're calculating. And uh, so uh, a Laplacian in terms of x1 and x2 can now be written essentially as a combination of two Laplacians uh, with the, yeah, there should be, of course, a plus sign here. There are no minus signs, so it was a, a typo. Uh, and uh, so the first Laplacian with respect to the center of mass uh, involves the total mass in the denominator, and the second Laplacian with respect to the relative coordinate involves this, uh, this guy, which actually is called the reduced mass. So another way to write it is uh, so m1, m2 divided by m1 plus m2, and this is called uh, reduced mass. So now we're in the position to actually put uh, everything together. So what we uh, have proven, as a matter of fact, is that uh, minus h squared over 2m1 uh, Laplacian uh, with respect to 1, the kinetic energy, the first particle minus h squared over 2m2 Laplacian of 2, the kinetic energy of the second particle, can be written as uh, minus h squared over 2m1 plus m2 uh, Laplacian with respect to the center of mass uh, minus h squared over 2 mu, the uh, reduced mass that I introduced in the previous slide, uh, Laplacian with respect to the relative coordinate. So um, if I stick it into the uh, Schrodinger equation, uh, I will get, therefore, the following, I will get minus h squared over 2, this uh, Laplacian of r m1 plus m2 plus a Laplacian uh, lowercase r over mu uh, plus the uh, potential energy and the interaction energy between the two particles, which depends only on this relative coordinate acting on my wave function. And the right hand side is just the energy as usual. So what I see from this equation and that is that there is just one part which depends on the relative coordinate and which involves interaction. And this part uh, represents essentially a free uh, Schrodinger equation for a combined particle with the mass m1 plus m2. Essentially it describes a free motion of two particles uh, as a whole. So for instance, if they were to form a bound state, this is exactly what we're going to be discussing in the last video uh, in this lecture. So this uh, term essentially describes uh, the motion of uh, this bound state, this sort of mole molecule-like state as a whole. And uh, so to uh, sort of extract this uh, overall motion, we can just uh, look for a solution. This psi tilde of capital R and uh, lowercase r can be written as a solution to this sort of free Schrodinger equation, which is simply a plane wave, as we know. It's e to the power i some momentum of this bound state, or whatever it is, times capital R divided by h bar, uh, times, uh, well, the wave function, which depends on the uh, relative coordinate that we actually want to find. And uh, the energy of this uh, motion from here is going to be just this capital P uh, squared divided by m1 
plus m2 well to, uh, twice m1 plus m2 so um which is just a parameter it doesn't appear anywhere else in the problem and we can just move it uh to the uh, uh right hand side subtract the total energy from the total energy this um uh, energy and uh, that's it so, so the resulting uh the, the final result that we're going to get, uh, which does not include um, this uh, this theorem, is going to look, um, let me just write it uh, here, is going to look as, as so, so it's going to be minus h squared over 2 mu, so this uh, reduced mass. Uh, so this Laplacian, which I can write as d2 over dr squared, plus v of r, uh, psi of r, and the right-hand side is going to be this e minus uh, p squared over 2 um, uh, m1 plus m2 so let me just write it as e prime uh, psi of r okay and this as you can see looks like a single particle Schrodinger equation so it depends only on the wave function depends only on one coordinate everything else is exactly the same the only difference is that here I'm dealing with some uh, reduced mass so uh, let's say in the context of the problem of uh, two electrons that we're actually going to study so uh, m1, so if m1 is equal to m2, so if m1 uh, is equal to m2, so then of course the total mass uh, is equal to uh, well equal to m to to m, and the reduced mass this mu is equal to m squared over 2m, or just m over 2. So therefore, in our electron problem, this guy is going to be just uh, the electron mass. So, um, and uh, just to summarize what we have proven uh, by this sort of brute force straightforward uh, calculation is that uh, in uh, the simple, uh, you know, two particle problem in two particle quantum mechanics, we can always, uh, you know, get rid of one sort of uh, uh, unnecessary coordinate which describes the motion of our, uh, of our two particles as a whole and uh, we can reduce our problem to the standard single particle quantum mechanics, which makes things much easier because we can now use the results and some of the uh, conclusions of uh, single particle quantum mechanics that we discussed uh, in the previous lecture.